I wish I could say that photographing this knife was a pure joy and a hell of a lot of fun, but let's be honest, it's a half micron mirror polished Todd bag. That means it's one of the most reflective things on the freaking planet. So enjoy the pictures, we'll come right back and we'll talk about this incredible knife. Welcome back boys and girls, Jim here once again and today I get the distinct pleasure to bring out to you the first brand new, all new folder design from Todd Bag in several years. As a matter of fact, it's his first all new folder design since he moved here to Dallas, Texas, which has been about three years now. What you're looking at here is the brand new Citadel and this is the prototype. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about, obviously, the specifications of the knife, the sizes, uh, how it came to be, and uh, some of the great details. But before I get into that, um, I, I think it's very important to distinguish the differences between a Todd Begg knife and a Begg Knives knife. Now, I still see this on a daily basis. People still don't understand the differences. Um, it's a lot more cut and dry now than it used to be. Todd Begg, who now lives in Dallas, Texas, has absolutely nothing to do in any way with Begg Knives in California, who have now dubbed themselves uh, the California Custom Group. The knives coming out of California are not custom knives. They're mid-tech knives uh, that, for the most part, and I say most part now because a few things have changed, for the most part are based off of Todd's original designs. Go back to the, the Glimpse and the Bodega and the Bugatti uh, and the, the Quaken and knives like that. Those are mid-tech knives and not customs, which is why you're paying anywhere between uh, $800 and $2,500 for various levels of those knives. Todd Begg, his own personal custom handmade knives that he makes himself, generally start in a folder around $4,000. That's the first way that you can tell the difference between uh, a custom and a not a custom, I guess you could put it. This is a full-on custom, and yes, I'm trying to wipe dust off as dust in the room settles on this mirror polishing. And that's really going to be a lot of the differences, is, is the detail work, the finish work that Todd puts into his knives that no one else really does in a, in a mid-tech knife. You really couldn't do it, or otherwise they would be the same price. You know, you're talking, you know, 20, 30, sometimes more hours just in hand finishing, hand polishing uh, of all the different parts of Todd's knives. And that's really one of the many things that has set him apart from everyone else in the industry. So, uh, if you ever wonder when you're looking on various dealer websites or somebody's selling a knife, you know, if they're selling a Todd Begg design, it's three, four hundred bucks, that's a steel craft. That's one of the um, uh, Chinese uh, licensed production knives that they were making. If it's anywhere between, you know, say six, seven hundred dollars uh, up to twenty five hundred, that's going to be one of the mid techs. And it'll say uh, Todd Begg design on the blade. On the uh, older ones, they've uh, recently changed how they word it. And if you're getting a custom, and boy, it's so reflective, my camera does not want to focus. It should say this if you're looking at a custom. So, uh, with that out of the way, to help you understand that um, not only does Todd have nothing to do at all with that business, uh, he also did not design the last two knives. I, I forget the names of them, the Mandera, and there was something else. 
he had absolutely no part in those whatsoever. So that's why I say this is the first all new folder design um, that he has done since he split from the uh, the company that he helped build. What you're looking at here is the new Citadel. It is nine inches in overall length. Uh, so not a tiny knife, but really not overly large. This is actually a, a pretty good EDC size. Puts you back in the same size uh, or, or very, very close to the Bodega if you're a Bodega fan. It's also got a fat booty like a Bodega too. It's got a four inch blade, which is a uh, just a tad longer than the Bodega uh, and just about the same as a Glimpse. So a four inch blade, this one happens to be um, RWL 34. Now, Todd is going to be offering these in pretty much everything that you can imagine. If, if you wanted the inlays to be in Mother of Pearl, Mammoth, Timascus, Damasteel, Damasteel Blades, uh, whatever it is that you want, again, these are full customs. So, Todd can do, if it's feasible, Todd can certainly do it. Now, before I go off too much on this, I really want you just to kind of soak in the overall design. And then we'll revel in the beauty of the finishing and the inlays and everything else. But I want you to get a good feel for how different this is from his other designs. Yet, when you look at it, it is unmistakably Todd Begg. He has a, uh, a design language that is immediately identifiable. There is a DNA uh, that's present in all of his knives. You'll notice how he's done the split handles. Again, that's one of the things that he likes to do. Uh, he loves to do uh, milled grooves. He loves to do uh, alternating sized holes, which we do not see in this one. You may think you're seeing it there, but those are actually inlays into the carbon fiber. We'll get to that in a moment. And then, of course, his standoffs for his clips with his signature bearing in the end of the pocket clip. You've seen a lot of companies and a lot of makers doing that. That is all influenced by Todd. Many of those did, luckily, obtain permission from Todd or his blessing to do so. Some, of course, have not, but that is his original design. He was the first guy to do that. And, yes, you will see a few things that make you think of a bodega. And that's, that's what's great about having a design language, where you can look at a maker's knife you know, from you know, 1995 and then 2015, then in 2025, and you can look at them and go, I know who made that knife. But it's not going to be the same knife as they've made before. That's the beauty of what he does. You'll notice also that everything in his designs flow from one segment to the other. Uh, he does very organic flowing designs. Even when you see some sharp angles like you see up here on the spine of the blade, it still flows perfectly with the rest of the design of the knife. And that's something that I feel is lacking in some of these new redesigns that we've seen. You know, somebody else stepping in and uh, designing a knife that still bears his name, where they've taken some of his elements and just kind of splashed them onto their designs, and it, it kind of comes off Frankensteinian in some way. Um, and again, I want to be very clear, I'm not bad-mouthing any of the guys out in California. Uh, they're still doing some really cool shit. But there is a marked difference between a Todd Bag knife and a Todd Bag design. So let's start taking a really good look at this up close and personal. We'll start with the blade. This is RWL 34. Todd loves using RWL 34. Um, it takes an absolutely amazing mirror polish. Now this is not just your standard mirror polish and that's one of the things that Todd is very well known for and what helps separate him from everybody else. He doesn't just hand sand everything up to two, three, four thousand grit and then buff it on a buffing wheel and call it a day. What you'll see is that every surface is a flawless mirror. It almost looks like liquid metal. It is as shiny and chrome-like as it can possibly be. There are no ripples. There are no spots where it's bending light in an unflattering way. Uh, what I'm talking about is you look at the flats, you look at the Ricasso. All these areas are still perfectly crisp and flat. They're not rounded off in any way. 
he spends a lot of time doing all of this by hand. Another impressive feature on this particular knife, I, I'm sorry I have to keep moving it because my studio lights, I just can't get, it's so damn reflective. What you've got here is a huge pocket that's been milled out of the blade. Here obviously is a slot that's been uh, cut all the way through. And fit into that pocket is a perfectly fit piece of carbon fiber. And inside the carbon fiber are these steel pins that are then inlaid into those. Now here's the beauty. If you close your eyes and run your fingers over this, you can't feel it. The inlays inside of inlays are absolutely undetectable by touch. And that follows through to the inlays in the titanium frame. You cannot tell that there's anything there. Notice number one, there's no gap between the carbon fiber and the mirror polished titanium, so that obviously it's fit extraordinarily tight. But you also can't feel it. It is the exact same level as the titanium. Absolutely beautifully done. For those that don't know, uh, Todd freehand grinds everything that he makes. And over the last 20 or so years, he's been pretty much all hollow grinds, which is what you've got here. Uh, he was telling me that he used a 5-inch uh, wheel to do the hollow grinds on this particular blade. Oh, man. And the feeling of his actions, smooth as glass, absolutely smooth as glass. Now, one of the things that you'll see that's a bit different, you might have been expecting more of a bodega look with that bolt-on look where the, the tail section with the clip is bolted onto the rest of the frame. He purposefully decided not to do the bolt-on look because, again, he wanted to create more of a separation between this and his older designs that are being made by someone else. He wanted everybody to look at this and go, it has a familiar feel to it, but this is all, you know, one piece here, one piece here, nothing additional bolted on to help it remain a little bit special, a little bit different. I just can't get over how glass smooth that is. And no matter how slowly I try to flip it, oh, it just it feels amazing. Another interesting point, and I'm hoping my camera is going to focus well, you'll notice you have the frame, then you have the blue titanium liners, and then this hardened 416 stainless steel backspacer. So you've got, the, you've got one, two, three, four, five separate components here, but I want you to take a look at the jimping. Notice how it's offset. Look at the amount of work that went into this. So the liners and the backspacer have jimping, but they're offset, but they line up. So the radius is offset, but they line up, obviously, perfectly, as you can see there. I mean, just you need to realize how difficult it is to do little things like that. Uh, here we have more of his beautiful decoration, followed through again onto the blue clip. You'll see more of the decoration here inside of the backspacer. Inside of the liners is jeweled. He always has a, a knack for picking really good color combinations too. I love this, this bright royal blue as a very minor touch of color up against all of this black and silver. Just beautifully, beautifully done. As far as the ergonomics, it's a Todd bag, so there's no hot spots. Everything is rounded off where it needs to be rounded off. Everything is smooth to the touch. The only sharpness on this knife is that laser edge. There's a little bit of sharpness here to these, but I mean, it's, it's meant to give you a much more aggressive look. This is a false edge here on the top clip. He has been doing some fixed blades lately where he has been sharpening uh, that top clip, so I want to make sure you're aware that that is unsharpened because that is exposed when the knife is closed in your pocket. Perfect lockup, as you would expect. And the thing about Todd is you're looking at a legacy maker. This is 
someone whose knives you're collecting that you're going to pass on through generations. His name is going to live forever. The amount of work that he puts into his knives, I mean, you could have a hundred hours or more into one knife that you're purchasing from him. And he does this not just for you, but for himself. He is, I've, I've really never seen anybody that was more of a perfectionist than he is. I don't care how much pain that man is in, <laughs> how much he's going through in his personal life, how much he would like to get out of the shop and spend time with his family and uh, activities with his kids and whatnot. He is so dedicated to his craft. He will look at a knife that anybody else would go, the knife is done. It's perfect. It looks great. And he'll go, no, nope, there's just something else I, I need to, to, to fine tune it a little bit more, need to polish a little bit more here, do a little bit more there. And he goes overboard with every single project, regardless of the size, regardless of the price. He puts the same amount of work into the fixed blades that he doesn't even charge half as much for. It truly is incredible to watch him work. I've had a, a lot of opportunities to do that, and it's, it's, it's inspiring for somebody like me, who's starting off in knife making, to watch how much somebody cares about their, their name. Because every single knife that he makes bears his name. So it has to have a certain degree of perfection. Could he put out a whole bunch of knives that are all just stonewashed and thrown out the door? Yeah, everybody does that. Everybody can do that. But that's what makes him different. He doesn't want to do that. If you ordered this knife all stonewashed, he, he would do it, but he would probably argue with you and go, are you sure you don't want to polish this or hand rub satin that? or Because that's what he loves to do. But if you said, hey, I want this knife, but I want it all stonewashed, sure, he'll do it. For you. He'll do it all bead blasted if you want. He's a custom knife maker. He makes it how you want it. So if you look at it and go, well, you know, I don't know if I could spend $4,000. Well, you know, if it was all bead blasted, it wouldn't be $4,000 because he wouldn't be sitting down um, destroying his elbows, you know, mirror polishing it. So keep that in mind as well, that there are always going to be options for you. Uh, when you order directly from Todd. If you're not a carbon fiber fan, fine. This is just the prototype. This one is sold, by the way. The owner was kind enough to let me do this video and photography on it. Uh, if you said, hey, I'm not really a carbon fiber guy. I'd rather have uh, OD Green Micarta in there, which, by the way, is about his favorite material. So if you say that, uh, he's going to love you forever. Um, so that could be done. If you want a mother of pearl, that could be done. If you want a damn steel blade, that can be done. Um, the options are nearly limitless when it comes to the materials that he works with and the ability that he has to pull the most out of those materials. Listen, I'm not going to lie, $4,000 plus is a lot of money for any knife. And you've watched my channel for years, you've seen knives come across here that are tremendously more expensive, tremendously less expensive. But there's a reason for each and every one and why to appreciate each one. When you're buying a Todd bag, it's about his uh, unique designs. It's about his flawless action with a detent that feels like a, a, a rod of glass breaking and his attention to the tiniest details, to the hand polishing that he puts in every knife that he polishes. Sitting down with die maker stones and sandpaper for hours and hours and hours a day. The half micron finish, I, I forget, but I believe that's the equivalent of, I want to say, 30,000 grit. To give you an idea of how fine it is, one of the things that uh, Todd had told me, he was mirror polishing a blade at one point, and he was just near the end of it. You know, he's, he's up in the really, really super high grits at that point, and he had a 2,000 grit scratch. Now, realize... Most makers offering a mirror polished knife will stop at two to three thousand grit and then buff it. At his final stages, there was a scratch in the blade that looked so horrific, you would have thought it was a 60 grit scratch, a super coarse, horrible, ugly scratch that he somehow just didn't see. That was a 2000 grit scratch. That's how fine his final finish is, that a 2,000 grit scratch on it would look like you dragged it across the freaking concrete. And that's why light dances off of his surfaces, unlike almost anybody else's. 
when you look at this level of maker, you know, you're looking at Michael Walker, you're looking at Ron Best, you're looking at Joe Kaios, rest in peace, uh, you're looking at this higher echelon of knife maker. And maybe you're not ready to spend that kind of money yet, but when you are, you're going to carefully research who are who is making knives at that level why are they at that level how long have they been making knives Todd's been doing this over 25 years and why are they so highly regarded in their craft and with Todd it's very easy to see just like those other makers you know you, you may not have heard of certain high-end makers because they they're obscure, they only make three or four knives a year, or they haven't made a knife in ten years, but it doesn't take away from the incredible work that they do. Then you have knife makers that have incredible famous names that, you know, they're not as perfect. Uh, I like to use Loveless for an example. Loveless, obviously, legendary, incredible knives, but not every single knife was utter perfection. You could find little things here and there, sometimes big things, and I don't mean just in his early knives, I mean even toward the, the end of his career, the end of his knife making life. You could still look at a knife and go, oh, well, maybe the plunges aren't perfectly even, uh, maybe the finish isn't perfectly smooth throughout, maybe the bevels aren't 100% symmetrical, but you're still buying into that legacy maker, someone who is a pioneer and had done things that no one had ever done before and set in motion things that would be done uh, forever in knife making. And I believe Todd is one of those makers. The difference is, I don't care how old that knife is, how early in his career it was, it's bound to be damn near perfect. And anything that I've seen from him in the past you know, 10 years, it is absolutely flawless. And I don't mean that in a, oh man, that is so perfect, that's flawless. I mean, you can look at it under a friggin' microscope and not see anything that isn't touched by him and that isn't absolutely perfect. The interior of this knife is finished to the same degree as the visible exterior. Parts that you're never going to see are perfect. And that's why his name is going to live on like Loveless, like, like these legacy makers. And the difference is, yes, you are paying a lot of money, but you are getting his blood, sweat, and tears. You are getting weeks, weeks of his life in every single knife that you get from him. There's nothing rushed. There's nothing, hey, let's get this out the door, or, oh, that's good enough. That doesn't exist in his world. And it doesn't exist in the world of that level of knife maker. You know, you don't buy a Stan Wilson and see uh, issues with the finish or chatter marks down the spine or things like that because they've done this for so long and perfected their methods so well and they understand the value of their name on that blade and their reputation that they won't allow anything to go out of that shop that isn't as perfect as human hands can possibly make it. And honestly, Todd goes beyond what human hands can do. It's, it really is remarkable. So I'm glad to see that he is back with a brand new model. I'm extremely excited. I know a lot of you out there that have been pulling for Todd over the past few years watching um, the things that have transpired in, in his business life have been pulling for him and waiting for the day that something like this came out. And here it is, baby. Here it is, the brand new Citadel. He is taking orders for them right now. I'll put all of his information below, his email, website, all that kind of good stuff. You can always reach out to him on Instagram as well. Get your order in because these are not the kind of things that can be cranked out overnight. He's only going to be able to take so many orders before it starts getting backlogged to a ridiculous degree. So here it is, guys, the brand new Todd Bag Custom Citadel. And I could not be more impressed, more blown away. And I'm so very happy for Todd, and I'm very happy for his fans that have been waiting for brand new design. Enjoy, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.